Hi, everyone. I hope everyone is still awake. It's going to be pretty fast, so no worries. Uh, we are sorry about our faces. It's been a 24 hours flight down from Argentina, so uh, yeah. <laughs> we are more tired than you guys. <laughs> Um, so, uh, my name is Jonathan, and uh, we are here to talk about Play With Docker. It's something that uh, we hacked on. Uh, hope you like it. So, really fast, we are Docker captains. Uh, we work in a company called Mantica. It's a, start, it's a machine learning startup based in Canada, but we are based in, in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, we've been working on lots of uh, open source projects. Uh, maybe you heard uh, about a few of these, maybe not, I'm not sure, but uh, WellPrint, it's one of those uh, projects that uh, we won the hackathon, I don't know if the last one, uh, Docker Hackathon, uh, with that one. Uh, we also worked on a few other projects like uh, Vault, and it's not the ha uh, HashiCorp Vault. Our Vault was before that, but it kept the name. Uh, we have a, con a container migration tool. It's the one that uh, we won the first hackathon, right, I think. And also uh, the Java driver for Redis. Uh, okay, but anyway, today is about uh, play with Docker. But before that, uh, we want really to uh, Say thank you to like the whole program of Docker Captains. It's amazing, and uh, to Jenny, uh, she helps us a lot, and also to Victor and Mano. I don't know if I, I forget someone. Yeah. It, Okay, so play with Docker. Uh, the the projects. Uh, uh, how many of you actually used play with Docker before or used it something? Amazing one. Okay, so two guys. Okay, two guys. that's nice. Okay. So they, this is going to be something new, which is which is yeah. cool. Okay, and maybe I don't know. In the future, all of the, all of you will will see. Um, so the, the project started in the, in the it was the Docker the summit, summit in Berlin. Yeah. In Berlin. And we, we were there and we just had like a, this idea of, hey, we should make it easy for people to start using Docker. Uh, right now, you start playing with Docker, right? Like, you, you, I don't know, right now you need to install it and sometimes it's, I don't know, it's a bit, uh, I don't know, it takes some time or whatever. You go to like, I don't know, a conference and you want to start using Docker and maybe it's, it's a bit hard to get there. So, especially if you organize a meetup or a training inside your company, sometimes you have issues with the bandwidth or you have issues yeah. with the uh, users, they don't get it running right away because they have a problem with VirtualBox or Hyper-B or x for Mac, so. Yeah, internet is always a problem in conferences. Yeah. Okay, um, so then we came up with this idea, okay, well, let's, let's do it simple. So, like, we are going to show you exactly, like the, the whole, this whole thing is going to be a demo, but I just want, wanted to highlight very quickly uh, uh, how we thought about it. So basically, whenever you go to this playwithdocker.com, uh, then we basically load balance between a few uh, nodes, okay? A node is a machine, an instance in EC2. And uh, this instance has installed a, a Docker in swarm mode, uh, but it's like a standalone swarm mode. It's not, a, it's not that we use it like to actually create a swarm. We just use it so we can create a, a overlay. Yeah, overlay networks. Okay, um, so then every time that you go to this uh, uh, post, you'll get a new session, and a new session is actually just a network. Okay, we create a, a, a Docker network in that swarm. In that network, every time that you create an instance, we're going to show it to you now, um, what we actually do behind the scenes is we just launch a Docker in Docker container in this network that we've created for the session, and you can create up to five. So basically, you have available to you 
uh, like five instances in the session, and you can play with each of these uh, instances individually. You can create a swarm, you can do whatever. Uh, so basically, uh, play with Docker or PWD, how we call it, is a, a box print. full of surprises. You'll yeah. see now and lots of things that you can do. It's with not it. like print working directory, so don't confuse it with yeah. that command. So it's a, yeah, I know we have a problem with that name, but it's okay. Yeah, the secret is open source. Huh? Okay, and by the way, it's open source, so uh, I think we don't have the, uh, okay. Yeah, we'll, if you look for play with Docker in GitHub, you're going to find, we don't have the link here because we set it up this super quick, but uh, yeah. uh, you can ask for the link later and we can give it to you. So you can set it up in your company if you don't want to use it like a public version. Yeah. But uh, okay, anyway. And we really, really, really uh, want to accept pull requests about a user interface that we are really bad at that. <laughs> yeah, so we are not front-end designers, so I'm sorry if there's any one of you here. So playwithdocker.com, a box full of, of surprises. You're another so, robot? Yeah, you need to bypass this little captcha because we don't want bots to like kill the whole thing. So whenever you go to this page, you get a four hour uh, session, right, right where you can just play with Docker as you like. So basically, as Jonas said, we can create an instance here. So this is a terminal and I have Docker installed. As you can see, the latest RC3, so you can play around with the latest Docker features if you want to try stuff, you want to do stuff. So the first thing that anyone would do is run a container, right? So Docker run hello world. As, and as we are in Amazon, we have we should have like the the most amazing bandwidth. So yeah, there we go, super fast. So Docker works, which is amazing. But uh, John has told you that Docker is like a P PWD is like a <clears throat> box full of surprises, right? So what can we do with it? Well, we can create more instances. So Maybe we can create a swarm, who knows? We're gonna to try to create more instances. This is one, one of the things that you can do. Another amazing thing, thing that you can do is you can just copy this URL as it is, and you can send it to a friend. So I'm going to send it to myself. And, and so you can see you have a live pair programming session, right? So you can send it to someone and, uh, and you can say, hey man, I have this problem with Docker. Uh, I can't get this running. So you share it to someone and they can start like seeing each other what they do right away. Another surprise, which is in the box, is that if someone has like a lower resolution because they use a 11 inch screen or something, Play With Docker oh, will, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, Play With Docker will automatically like uh, adjust the terminal size. As you can see, the other terminal here is like getting to the biggest resolution automatically. So you won't miss anything. This is, it works pretty much like Tmax. So if someone uses Tmax remotely, so the terminal get gets uh, adjusted uh, automatically. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Uh, what, else, what else can we do with Play With Docker? So I already told you that we can create like five instances, Jonas told you that. So we can do with five instances, which is pretty cool, we can do Docker Swarm init, and we need to specify the advertise address as the advertise address as the IP of the machine. So this is 10, 0, 31, 3. And boom, we have a swarm working in this machine. And as, as, I don't know if you saw, but you got this uh, blue, blue man icon here, which is pretty nice, uh, which means that this is a master node, basically. So I can just copy this, this link right here. And I can come to this computer, and I can just paste it. We have a, a worker. We have a, another worker. And bam, we have a, like a three node swarm cluster that we can play stuff with it. Another surprise, which is also in the box, so you must be thinking, okay, I can run stuff here, like uh, I can do docker run, dash d, dash p, ad, ad, uh, nginx, for instance. But you are, I am pretty sure that you will be thinking, okay, what happens if I create a, like a web stuff and I want to access it from the outside, right? Because this is running on a, on a, on a server somewhere. And thanks to Amazon speed of light, we have the container pretty fast. And what you're going to see is that once the container is running, we automatically detect that someone is running, exposing a port there, and we provide like a super useful link that you can click right away. And if the power is with me, bam, you have your web server running, you can access it from anywhere in the web, which is pretty nice. Uh, so basically, if you create something that exposes a port, you will have it right away there, so that's cool. So let's try with a pretty much like a different complex example. So we're going to remove this container, docker, this one, docker rm26. Uh, okay, so now we're going to do, uh, we're going to try with a swarm service. So we're going to do docker service create. So I hope that anyone knows about swarm. It's like the coolest feature of docker, the latest feature, orchestration, scaling. Uh, we're gonna create a, like a, a 
again with 4, 8, 80, 80, nginx. I'm gonna put a name to this, name nginx. And if everything works okay. Which it didn't. Uh, I need the, yeah, the container, right? The image. There we go, and if everything works okay, the container gets scheduled, as you can see, I got the port again, so I can access to my Swarm services, right here. But the good thing is that, I mean, this URL, as you can see, it hits, it uh, redirects you to the, the, the machine that the container run, basically. But if you go to a different machine, as this is working in a Swarm mode, which means that routing mesh comes into place, I should be able to access that same container with the routing mesh uh, Docker feature, which is correct. If I click, if we go to the other machine and I click that link, automatically the routing mesh does its work and redirects me to the, the first container. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, session sharing. Um, uh, well, I can create, of course, I can promote, I can do, oh, I have another feature that you're going to like. So I can do Docker Swarm join token, for instance, uh, manager, so I can have another manager here. Let's try to do this copy this link and I'm going to paste it to this node. So bam, I have another manager, as you can see, everything works out of the box. And I believe I have two more stuff that I would like to show you. The first stuff is, okay, we have this little stuff there, but you're going to tell me, oh, no, Google, no, okay. No, but I, uh, let me try to enhance the font a little bit so you can show it and you can maybe have Maybe we can have a round of applause if this works. I don't know. It's like a bit, a bit tricky. No, for the last one. Let's make it for the last one. So another thing that we do is, as you can see, this URL exposes the port here of the container that, of the container that is running. So what if you tell me, hey man, I don't like this, this interface. This is pretty shitty because it's like web-based and I can, can't copy and paste really well. And uh, I don't know, I don't like it for whatever reason. So what if I can tell you that you can do this? for Docker host, and then you're going to export the play with Docker URL session, right? So you're going to point it to the port 80, but instead of uh, using the, I believe I need to use this T here, but instead of using the 80 port, you're going to use, okay, I want to use the daemon, uh, the daemon host, basically. If I do Docker PS, bam. With my local CLI, I'm pointing to this instance. So basically, if I go here and I do, Docker service RM Nginx. Docker service RM Nginx. So the port left, as you see, but I, I can him, come here in my local machine and I say docker run dash D dash B 80, 80 Nginx. So this runs and you see this, it is running in PWD. <laughs> nice, nice. So now, if you don't like the interface, you don't have excuses. You can just point your CLI to this interface and everything will just work like magic. And the last feature, which I don't know if it's going to work, but uh, it really. It is going to work, man. It is going to work. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to access to the PWD server in production and I'm going to kill the running container. So I'm going to kill PWD. So PWD is, is uh, shutting down. Let's say that I have to make an upgrade to PWD or something. As you can see, the server is disconnected. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start to start it again. Hopefully no one is using it right now. Okay. If you are using it, you will have to wait. I don't know if, it, if, this, if this is going to work, but I have some faith. So after it, uh, it starts, uh, it takes some time because it needs to do crazy stuff, as we showed you. And if everything goes okay, I should get my connection back. <laughs> And everything works. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, that's all. I hope you, I mean, this is open source, as Jonas said, so if you, you can download it and you can like set it up in your own lo local company if you want. You can use the Amazon powered, unlimited uh, <laughs> speed of light version if you want. And uh, questions are open. Nice, nice. Hope you like it and use it to try Docker. I mean, we try to put here the latest Docker versions. So you just try new stuff here. If you want to try, what's in RC3? Does anyone know? I mean, if you want to try the secret stuff, uh, Steve, you know, what's in RC3? 
if you want to try the Prometheus stuff, you can you can come here without upgrading Docker, if, because sometimes in Docker for Mac it's not like right away. Yeah. Secrets, yeah. Amazing. So if you want to try new stuff, you can come here without. If you don't get the update for Docker for Mac, just come here and try it out. Uh, I don't know. What yeah, and please let us know if you have any feature requests. Oh, there, there are lots of uh, pending. If the URL is play with Docker in GitHub, uh, this one. So there are like 15 issues. So if you can help us to improve this, I mean, there are lots of stuff. We would like to make this like, we would like to make like a tutorial section where you can go through the different Docker steps, like creating an image, creating a container. I mean, there are lots of stuff that can can improve. So. So Help is wanted. The live one is just uh, 113, right? You don't have like a 112. Like if I wanted to like futz around with the current stuff, is there a way for me to switch between the RC and? So that's actually a. a yeah, that's an issue. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That is one of the okay, issues. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, in the issue list, we, I mean, eventually we'd like to have like templates for the sessions. So I want a session with 112 and a swarm already configured. Yeah. So you just select the template and everything will be there. I mean, there are lots of stuff that we want to do, but we don't have time. But yeah, we're, we're planning to do that, like allow you to select the Docker version that you would like to test or whatever, yeah. Okay, cool, thanks. Any other questions? So no one is asking about security. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can leave that to another yeah. subject. Uh, but yeah, security is, is a thing because if, for those who know, Docker and Docker needs to run containers in privileged mode, which is not super friendly. But we are we're not going to go deep inside that road because yeah. there might some questions might become a little bit uncomfortable. But uh, we're going to we're working on security yeah. and we're going to improve it. We have like plans for that, and uh, you won't have to worry. I mean, there's nothing that this yeah, machine, it's for playing, right? Yeah, so it's you, for you won't have a this really... machine doesn't have. If you compromise the machine, nothing will happen. I mean, it's like a machine isolated in the. Just don't leave anything important here. Yeah, don't try to run your. Uh, enterprise secure <laughs> password environment secure app or anything in there, please. And that's it. There is a question there. Since you brought up security, um, I know we get a lot of uh, DDoS attacks externally from like these services. Have Have you guys came up with any cool workarounds or like detection mechanisms to figure out if people are using these containers to perform DDoS attacks against other people? Um, nice question. Yeah. Nice question. To be honest. Uh, no, not really. Uh, we actually discovered, I don't know, like maybe a misuse of this uh, by, uh, I don't know, checking, like playing with it and then discovering that it's super slow. So then we just logged into the to the instance and saw, yeah, like maybe, I don't know, crazy, crazy things. But uh, we have a few ideas on how to, to make it better. So Yeah, one thing actually. is that uh, we thought about applying networking restrictions to this. The thing is that C groups still do not uh, work with networking so far. I, I, I believe that eventually they will do, but not, not at this moment. But uh, what we're going to do is to apply some traffic control stuff. So you can't like really make a lot of requests. I mean, you will be able to query the hub and uh, the registry like with super fast. But if you want to access somewhere else, you will have a, like a bandwidth and a connection penalty, basically. So you can't like DDoS some other sites from here or, or else. So yeah, and we are going to add we're, we don't know, we're thinking about it. Maybe we're going to add like two-factor authentication with uh, the Docker Hub accounts. So if you're doing something malicious, we're, we're going to know who you are, basically. Thank you. Yeah, there is a question there. Uh, great presentation. <laughs> very, very concise. Um, you keeping it running longer than the four hours, or is is there like what's the reasoning behind that, and would it be possible to like? Yeah. So originally it was one hour, <laughs> and we increased it to four hours because uh, usually I don't know like workshops or really long tutorials uh, last longer than one hour. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean it's uh, yeah it's it's super like it's super easy to actually change it. It's just that we need to figure out like what's what would be the best. Uh, way to do it, uh, and I don't know, like if you have any ideas. We are yeah, we, we are open to the feedback of the community, yeah. so if you feel like four hours is not enough, maybe. Something we thought about is maybe if you're starting to run out of time, then you maybe you can add like more time to your Yeah, manually, session. that would be a good idea also. Yeah. Uh, another thing uh, about the time that we had, uh, I can't remember now, but anyways. 
also maybe like private private sessions or things like that. Oh yeah, one thing that we thought is that it would be amazing that if you could actually like hit a bug and you can file an issue into the Docker repo and uh, like provide a way for the Docker developers to reproduce the stuff using this. So you don't have to go and manually like do all the stuff like, uh, okay, I created a network with this parameter, maybe this is a uh, yeah, Just like replay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we thought about like recording the commands that you write in there. So you can just export that as a thing for the Docker tracker. And then when a Docker developer comes in, he can just click a link and reproduce it right away in this, in this stuff. Yeah. But uh, any other questions? Maybe about Argentina, I don't know, whatever you like. <laughs> we have good meat, wine, and tango. Tango, that's nice. Uh, but uh, anyways, if you have any suggestions or whatever, just uh, put it in the repo, or you can tweet us. Uh, you can find our tweets in the, somewhere over the web. Yeah, uh, Yeah. but if you check the meetup uh, invitation, the tweets uh, should be there. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.